The fans of this sport are built differently. They demand excellence and expect nothing less. Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond is a show dedicated to the fans. Your new home for Big Ten Wrestling is here, and it starts now. Hard to believe, just three editions of Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond, counting this one to come this year. Rick Pizzo joined, as always, by Shane Sparks. We still have the NCAAs to preview and recap in a few weeks, but the Big Tens are now in the rearview mirror, and this guy kind of getting his life back after about 20 hours of broadcasting from Ann Arbor. It was fantastic. Of course, we had the quad box, but what I love about this tournament, Rick, and you saw it all weekend, the emotions, the ups and downs, navigating those emotions, getting on the podium. What a weekend in Ann Arbor. This was a fantastic Big Tens. It's one of the best that I've ever seen. And every year at the Big Tens, you have to expect the unexpected. A year ago, Michigan pulling off the upset to win the team title. This year, the event back in Ann Arbor at the Chrysler Center, but we saw the expected because Penn State wins the Big Ten team title for a seventh year, went in as huge favorites, yet Big Ten champions, RBY, Levi Haynes, the only freshman to wrestle in the finals, upsets Peyton Robb, Carter Storacci, and Aaron Brooks doing exactly what we expected them to do as Kale Sanderson's crew proves why they will be a huge favorite at the NCAAs in a couple of weekends. And second behind Penn State, those Iowa Hawkeyes, Spencer Lee winning his third Big Ten title. Liam Cronin wrestled them tough. Spencer Lee a couple of tech falls before beating Cronin in that championship final. He has won 55 straight. One more box to check. And how about Real Woods? He comes from Stanford, where he won two Pac-12 titles. Now we can add Big Ten champion to his resume. Impressive showing for Iowa. Could certainly say the same about Nebraska. Mark Manning's crew sent five wrestlers to the semifinals. All five made it to their respective championship matches, and they were led by this man, Silas Allred, 197-pound Big Ten champion, beating defending Big Ten and NCAA champ Max Dean of Penn State to get there. It is so tough to win a Big Ten title. Mason Paris, he's been in this championship final a couple times, falling to Gable Stevenson, but he gets it done. He'll take that one step to the top of the podium in front of his friends and family. There you see his mom and dad inside Chrysler Arena. What a way to end it. Look at the emotion. Mason Paris, you're a Big Ten champion. He said it would be a dream to win the Big Ten title in Ann Arbor. He did exactly that. Now finally out of that massive shadow that Gable Stevenson cast over all of college wrestling during his time at Minnesota. So we start with Penn State. Six finalists, four champions, only Max Dean at 197 and Greg Kirkviet at heavyweight failed to take the championship after reaching the finals. It's what we expected. Levi Haynes was unexpected. They are simply loaded and Shane. They're a huge favorite. No one is expected to contend with Penn State at the NCAAs. You look at what they did. Roman Bravo Young wins his third Big Ten title. Aaron Brooks' his third Big Ten title. Starachi is second. But they always got those new up-and-comers. The new litter, as I like to say. Levi Haynes, one of those young lions. He's hungry, so talented. In a battle with Peyton Robb, found a way to win. That was one of the more exciting matches of the championships. Yeah, Rick, they are so good. I don't expect to see much of a change in Tulsa. And, and I think it says a lot about their mentality as well, because after losing last year, it seemed like they bought in more to this year's conference championships. They were not leaving Ann Arbor with those, without those championship hats. They've won nine of the last 11 national tournaments. I mean, that is their top prize. But the Big Ten Championships, it's a very tough tournament to win. The scoring's a little bit different between the Big Tens and the NCAAs. But this particular season, just so much horsepower, so much talent, they'd be tough to knock off. It would take a supreme effort. I know when it comes to Iowa wrestling, second place is usually never good enough. But this was an impressive weekend for the Hawkeyes. Impressive enough, Shane, that they will send 10 wrestlers to the NCAAs. The Iowa Hawkeyes are a phenomenal program. Being second in the country, there's no shame in that. Of course, they won the national title as a team in 2021. But you said it, Rick, all 10 guys, a couple of champions. You got a runner-up in Patrick Kennedy, Max Mirren and Tony Cassiope, very good at third. Nelson Brands, Jacob Warner, fifth. They perform pretty well. 
but Spencer Lee and Real Woods are the guys kind of carrying the water. Now, Lee, you mentioned Liam Cronin wrestled him tough, and he did, but there was no doubt. In Real Woods, he just can grind guys out. What a one-two punch at some of the starting weights. Yeah, Spencer Lee, 37 points, Rick, in his first two matches. He beats Liam Cronin 8-2, to two, really controlled the match. It's crazy that when Spencer Lee beats him by six or seven, it's news. He's one of the all-time greats. He's got one more box to check. And with Real Woods as well, he's a guy that wants to get to the top of the podium. Andrew Aliras from Northern Colorado is the number one seed. But Real Woods, he'll be right there in the mix to win it all in Tulsa. Speaking of being there in the mix, how about Mark Manning's Nebraska Cornhuskers? I mentioned five guys to the semis, all five win their semis to get to the finals. Silas Allred, the Big Ten champ at 197. I know Peyton Robb is disappointed because he had the undefeated streak ended by Levi Haynes in that 157-pound final. But you perform like this, and Mark Manning has to feel like his team is inching closer and closer to that big two at the top in Penn State and Iowa. Mark Manning is one of the best coaches in the country. They lost a lot, Rick. They lost a handful of All-Americans last year. Silas Solred, first year in the starting lineup. Brock Hardy, first year in the starting lineup. Liam Cronin back after missing last year with an injury. Of course, you got those two staples in Robin Labriola. Nebraska, fifth in the country a year ago. They're going to Tulsa. They expect to take a trophy home. Mark Manning and that staff, Brian Snyder, uh, Cervell Delognev, I think this is one of the best years that I've seen from a Big Ten coach with this program. I'll make the argument that the best individual storyline, and there were a lot, all red, Levi Haynes, Spencer Lee, guys we've already mentioned, was Mason Paris because of where he did it, because of how he did it, because of who he did it against. And because now, Shane, I think you can start to wonder just how dominant would this guy have been if Gable Stevenson wasn't around during the same time in college. Three-time Big Ten finalist. He was a national finalist in 2021. He's been a perfect 28-0. And I love this rivalry with Paris and Kirkfleet. These two guys have now met six times, Rick. It is 3-3. Three, three. Mason Paris digging deep. It wasn't easy. Had a stall call go against him late. Had to keep his poise and composure. Stayed with the plan. Gets a sweet takedown. You see the power on that level change. And just check him out. I mean, that is exuberance. He's a Michigan man. Mason blue through and through. Happy for Mason Paris. Great young man. Awesome wrestler. But he is an awesome person as well. So happy for the big Michigan heavyweight. A year ago, Shane... When we were doing this show, someone could have thrown the name Silas Allred at us, and I'm not sure we would have even known whether he was a wrestler inside the Big Ten or what he could become, and now he is a Big Ten champion. I think this is the biggest surprise, not in the Big Ten. I think he's the biggest surprise in the country this year in college wrestling. Every one of these guys, Rick, has a story. Each and every one of them, Silas Allred, he's battled some adversity. Fantastic story. At 197, Beating Max Dean, he took down Max Dean three times. The key to that match, and match tactics are critical at this stage of the game, he never had to go on bottom of Max Dean, who's one of the best riders in the country. That was a huge win. Nebraska had the five in the finals. They were 0 for 4, so to get him to win that title gives him something to feel really good about on that trip back to Lincoln. And to do it against the defending Big Ten and NCAA champion, something special. At 165, we discussed this weight class throughout the course of the year, how wide open it was. Anybody in the Big Ten, maybe among the top five, six seeds could win it. It ends up being the top guy in Dean Hamity. I love the way he wrestles. He's aggressive. He goes after it. He got Patrick Kennedy down and never gave up in this match. Here's a young man with a remarkably bright future. 2022 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Last year in Detroit at the NCAAs, he was an All-American, but he looked different this weekend couple of major decisions. He gets Patrick Kennedy. The Hawkeye only had two losses this season. One to the Badger Hamity. Puts up nine points. He can scramble. He's got that length. He presents different challenges. And again, just the emotion. It's a big deal, Rick, to win a Big Ten title. I've said it many times before. You can't go to the local grocery store, go to that fourth aisle, second shelf up, and get a Big Ten title. You've got to earn it. And you see that with the emotions from these guys. Fourth Aisle, second shelf <laughs> up. That's where my no Big Ten titles available there. That's where you get the best kind of cereal, the really sugary kind that these guys absolutely never get to eat. It is time for a quick break here on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. When we come back, this should be really fun. We've talked about Mason Paris and the storybook finish. Shane chats with the Michigan heavyweight and the new Big Ten champion right after this.
shot here from Kirkfleet. And Harris going to look for the goal behind. Got to be careful like this. If you try to go around too high, Kirkfleet might shoot back in. Try to beat that right shoulder. He, he drives it over. over. And there's the takedown. Mason Harris. Third time is a charm. He's a Big Ten champion. There's nothing cooler than watching an elite athlete realize that their dream has become reality. That was the case this weekend in Ann Arbor, where in front of his friends, family, and the home crowd, Mason Paris locked up the Big Ten Tournament Championship. After that victory, and after he had a while to soak it all in and realize exactly what he had accomplished, Mason chatted with Shane. Mason, you've been so close. Two-time Big Ten finalist, you break through as a Big Ten champion. What was your mindset, final thoughts, as he came to center mat? Yeah, um, you know, I was super excited, you know, to be here in Ann Arbor and in front of my fans and my family, and you know, it was just an amazing experience. You know, I uh, did not give up, gave up that stall call, so I just had to recollect myself and you know, get after another takedown and uh, you know, just go after it. How do you stay poised in that situation? Yeah, you know, I uh, been working on you know any adversity hits and uh, you know keeping my composure and just uh, getting after it and you know doing whatever I can to win. You've been to the Big Ten Finals before, two experiences, losses to Gable Stevenson. What did you take away from those defeats that really proved to help you in this final? Yeah, so, you know, I've been in the Big Ten Championship before, so, you know, I, I kind of knew, you know, what the surrounding was and, you know, the pressure behind it all, and, you know, I didn't let that get to me at all, and, you know, it was just any other wrestling match for me. What's it like to wrestle heavyweight in the Big Ten coming into these championships, the top four in the weight class from the Big Ten, a couple more All-Americans in the mix as well? I mean, there's a lot of talent in this weight class. What's it like to compete week in, week out with the best? Yeah, the, the Big Ten heavyweight is, you know, I think one of the best, you know, classes you know in the country and you know it's amazing to be able to compete in that you know we all make each other so much better every single week and you know it's a grind uh, you, know, you don't get any easy matches all year so you know it's a lot of fun you know going out there and competing with those guys I want to go back to you as a young kid how did you get involved in wrestling yeah, so my dad got me into wrestling when I was four years old. He uh, wanted to get me better at football, actually. He was a college football player. And, uh, yeah, so uh, he knew how much uh, wrestling helps you with football. And, you know, wrestling just kind of stuck for me. You know, I fell in love with the sport and, you know, decided to do it in college. And the rest is uh, coming now. You're a three-time state champion from Indiana. Why was Michigan the right fit? How did they sell you to come to Ann Arbor? Yeah, Michigan was a no-brainer for me. You know, the academics are amazing. You know, I, want, I uh, came here to be a civil engineer. I'm going to get my degree, you know, this semester. And uh, so the academics are amazing, and the athletics are, you know, tip-top. You know, we have the best academic or athletic programs in the entire country. So, you know, it was a no-brainer for me. You know, great coaches. You know, I got great partners here. So, you know, it was, it was great to be, uh, you know, part of those guys and become a Michigan man. What are your favorite things to do on campus here in town? Oh, I have a lot of things. I uh, I love going out to the restaurants. I love going out to eat and, uh, you know, just, you know, hanging out with my friends. Uh, you know, I, I love Ann Arbor summers. The summers are amazing. You know, the winters are cold, but uh, the summers and springs are a lot of fun. How do you celebrate tonight? Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to spend time, you know, with my family and, you know, have, have some fun tonight, celebrate, and then, you know, get back to work tomorrow and, you know, work on some stuff that I need to work on, you know, watch some film tomorrow and get back to work. You're at the top of the podium, but it takes so many people to help raise you to that level. Your mom and dad, Mark and Shay, we had some great shots from them during the championship. Talk about the influence that they've had on you as a person. Yeah, there's been so many people that have dedicated a lot to me, and, you know, I, I'm really thankful for them and blessed to have people like that in my corner. And, you know, it's amazing to have my parents. You know, they, they don't miss a dual meet, and, you know, they come to every single match of mine. So, you know, it's amazing, and it's huge to have that kind of support behind me. And, uh, you know, it, it helps, you know, motivate me on bad days. And, you know, my dad, you know, driving me all around the country as a little kid. So, you know, I uh, came from, you know, humble beginnings in a small town, but, you know, it's, uh, it's great and to have that, those people behind me. What are you thinking about standing atop that podium with that big wall chart as a Big Ten champion? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's really exciting and, you know, a lot of fun. You know, it's something I worked hard and something I dreamed about for a really long time. And, uh, you know, it's great to uh, realize that, you know, all the hard work I've been doing is finally paying off. And, uh, you know, job's not done yet. You know, national tournament in two weeks. And, you know, I'm hoping to get, you know, even better by then. And, 
you know, uh, punch my ticket to the finals and get that national championship. Why is it your time in Tulsa? Yeah, it's my time because I put in so much work this summer and, uh, you know, this is my last season. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing everything I can. I'm pouring a lot. I've poured a lot of blood, sweat and tears into the season. And, you know, I've uh, worked the hardest I've ever worked. And you know, I think I'm, you know, currently at the, the best version of myself right now. And but, you know, that version is going to get even better in two weeks and continue for the rest of my career. How do you want to be remembered? Yeah, I want to be remembered just, you know, as a Michigan man, as a humble, you know, good leader and, uh, you know, someone, you know, the kids can look up to and, uh, you know, just, you know, have a guy that, you know, you can look up to and, you know, have fun out here. Congratulations. You're a Big Ten champion. Good luck in Tulsa. Thank you so much, Mason. Yeah, thank you. Mason Paris, certainly a guy who knows a thing or two about what goes into our next segment. Tough Wrestling is next when Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond continues. You better be tough. A new segment this season called Tough Wrestling. I love this segment. It fires me up. Stay on the legs, Ricky. See, Stay now, on the legs. legs. I'm in a full ladder right now. Heart's beating. I love it. You never, ever give away those cheap points. Wrestle tough. Stay on top. What a weekend in Ann Arbor. We saw two days of tough, tough wrestling. Things we talk about every week, how important they are. We saw a ton of that in Michigan. Big Ten championship version of tough wrestling. Roman Bravo Young inside of five seconds. So quick. 2-0. Going to be tough to beat RBY when you give up a takedown in the final seconds. I love the mentality. Now, Roman Bravo Young stays on his offense. He doesn't just stay pat with that 2-0 lead. His second takedown, those quick, quick finishes, he's up 4-0. Second period, inside 50 seconds, he finishes the job. Roman Bravo Young, his third Big Ten title. This was one of my favorite matches. Sammy Sasso, Michael Block is to go for a six seed. He comes out quick. Talk about those finishing periods strong, starting periods. So Block is 2-0, brings Sasso back down. Couple of good little returns there. And now Sasso, 2-1, short time inside of 20 seconds. He gets his first lead. He's up 3-2. Late in the second period, watching these two near the edge. Look at Block is dropped down. He gets that takedown with 20 seconds left. We're going to bring him back to the sec uh, center. 5-3 for Block is. This is so big for Sammy Sasso. He gets that escape, makes it a one-point match. That would prove critical in setting up the sudden victory. Here's where Sasso is so good. He can do some really funky stuff with his finishes, and he gets the win in sudden victory, 7-5. Remember that late escape in the second period. Sammy Sasso, the Buckeye, picks up his second Big Ten title. What a match with Haynes and Rob. Peyton Rob is really good with those quick escapes. Rolls through the Cornhusker, makes the turn right here. He's up 1-0. This next 15 seconds might have been the most critical in the entire match. Looking for a mat return. Levi Haynes pops right back up. Peyton Robb is so good in the top position. Many times he's going to get a riding time point. But Haynes able to cover the fingers, and he's going to skip away. That escape was everything in this match for Levi Haynes. And what a finish. Peyton Robb going to try a short drag, but Haynes just keeps on wrestling. Got a single leg, roll through there from Robb. Haynes stays right with it. You got to wrestle every position until the end. Slams him down to the Resolite. Levi Haynes of Penn State wins the Big Ten title as a true freshman. You look at the emotion, big smile on his face. Why not, Levi? You're a Big Ten champion. And how about the big guys? Again, you want to score first and get to your offense. Here's a dump by Mason Paris. It's incredible to see a heavyweight move like Mason Paris. Kirkfleet, though, in the bottom position. Look at that. Drops his hips, gets the escape. Really, really good work there from Kirkfleet. Now Paris trying to ride Kirkfleet. And Kirkfleet, again, the quick escapes. Look at that movement there with the sit position. Now Mason Paris. Look at the riding time. Kirkfleet's going to be able to get the riding time, but it's big there for the Wolverine. He escapes. Mason Paris known in sudden victory. He gave up a late stall, call it to keep his poise. Here we are in sudden victory. Mason Paris inside Chrysler Arena had to weather the storm of Kirkfleet. These guys, like I said, 3-3 now in this rivalry. 
a lot of tough wrestling, quick escapes, scoring late, the little, little things, Rick, when you're wrestling some of the top guys in the country, they cannot be overlooked. That's the recipe to winning a Big Ten title. I'll say this, there are no little things when you're at the Big Ten Championship and there's certainly no little things when you're talking about a match between Mason Harris <laughs> and Greg Kirkley. Two absolute hammers, and what a way to finish the 2023 Big Ten Championships. Hey, we'll finish this show when we come back after the break. Take a look at some of the best social media reaction, and it was some amazing stuff on the social sites following one of the greatest tournaments you'll see in any sport in any college. Rick Pizzo, Shane Sparks back with you. Just a few more minutes here on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. But Shane, plenty of time for us to bring the viewers the hottest fire from the social media sites this weekend and those that were following the Big Ten Wrestling Championships and posting about them. And this may be my all-time favorite. This is Patrick Kraft, the athletic director from Penn State, who you don't see quite yet, but you will in a minute, watching Levi Haynes against Peyton Robb. Wait for it. Wait for it. There's athletic director Kraft, and you can tell, Shane, there's a guy who was a walk-on for the Indiana football team during his college career. I love to see administration get behind wrestling. It is huge for the program, and I love that kind of passion and intensity. That's fantastic. Maybe Kale Sanderson, if an assistant coach has to call in sick or something one day, can get <laughs> A.D. Kraft to come in to the wrestling room. I'm not sure it's going to get a whole lot better than that, but we're going to try. Some more of the best from social media. It's very simply put, Shane. Levi Haynes. Yeah, Thomas Gilman, one of those guys on social media, he doesn't say a lot, but typical Thomas Gilman supporting one of the Penn State Nittany Lions, Levi Haynes, enough said. Yeah, not a lot of words, not a lot needs to be said about a true freshman beating a previously undefeated wrestler to claim the Big Ten title at 157. From college wrestling, how about Aaron Nagao being a beast, making it all the way to the championship match? Yeah, he was really impressive as a six seed, beat Lucas Bird, the three seed, beat Jesse Mendez of Ohio State, the number two seed, and against Roman Bravo Young, he rode yep. Roman Bravo Young the entire third period, got a riding time point. I'm not sure that's happened to RBY in quite some time. All right, Shane, I'm not sure if this debate is ever going to end. It's the coffee grinder argument between you and Jim <laughs> Gibbons. It's not even a debate, Rick. It's the coffee grinder. You get them down here. I knew this was wrist, coming, by the right way. right here. Then what I'm doing is I'm going to pop. I'm going right into a half Nelson. It's a coffee grinder. It's a go-to move. It's coffee grinder. Coffee grinder. I, I got all sorts of weight on Shane. I got no <laughs> chance to fight that off. Mason, Mason Paris on a vision quest, one of the greatest movies of all time. It is the greatest movie. Of course, you think about Loudon Swain beating Brian Shute. I'm surprised that he hit a lateral drop on, on Brian Shute, but Mason Paris beating Greg Kerfleet, that was a great match. Man, vision you're going quest. all the way back into the film vault. I absolutely love it. And lastly, don't forget... The Big Ten Wrestling Championships next year, March 9th and 10th, going to College Park, Maryland. That's going to be a lot of fun. First time Maryland's hosting as a member of the Big Ten. Looking forward to getting to Maryland. Cannot wait for that. Of course, we also can't wait for this year's NCAA Championships coming up next week. Shane and I will be back. We will preview all the Big Ten wrestlers that are set to head to Tulsa and try to claim college wrestling's highest honor. By the way, I think I'm going to be sore for a couple of days after that. For Shane, I'm Rick. Look forward to seeing you for that next week on the next edition of Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond.